Oh, you asked about the, the source of the data on the right chart. It, it's actually not Dr. Christie's data. It's the remote sensing systems, the RSS data that, that is up there. So what accounts for the difference between your data set and, say, uh, surface data, which, to my understanding, tends to show at least some degree of warming? Right. Okay, so I use 13 different satellites. The first one was launched in 1979, and it lasted for a couple years. And then there was another one launched in, in 1980, and it lasted for maybe six years or something like that. So you have this big continuum of satellites. And in order to get a global data set over the entire time period, you have to cross-calibrate those satellites. And that is kind of a difficult thing. And it's especially difficult because as the satellites, as they're flying up there, the exact time that they measure, the time of day that they measure the temperature of the Earth changes. So you can imagine if you started out measuring the temperature at 2 in the afternoon and then a few years later you're measuring it at 6 in the afternoon, maybe it would be cooler. So you have to adjust for those kinds of drifts. And that's probably the largest source of error in the satellite data set is we don't really know how to do that because we don't exactly know how the temperature changes with time of day everywhere on the Earth. And the, the surface data sets also have adjustments. You know, they have to, the different, there's slightly different calibrations between the thermometer in one city and the thermometer in the next city over. So both kinds of data sets, you have to do all these adjustments in order to make a long-term data set. So what's most accurate? What's the most accurate measure of temperature? Well, I would, I would have to say that the surface data seems that it's more accurate because you know, a number of groups analyze the surface data including some who set out to prove the other one's wrong, and they all get more or less the same answer. You know, the spread, it's, I think the spread in trends is, you know, I'm, I can't remember the number, but it's considerably less than the satellite data set. And then there's three groups that, that analyze our, the satellite data set, or four if you include the University of Washington, and you get a much bigger spread of results from the satellite data than you do from the surface data. So that, to me, suggests that it's much more sensitive to the decisions that you make when you're trying to do the center calibration than the surface data is. It is so the satellite data is sensitive to the adjustments that the scientists make. Yeah, are more sensitive than the surface data is. Is is your does your data is essentially in agreement or identical to the University of Alabama? I think it's more or less an agreement, especially if you, you take into account the uncertainty. I mean, it, you know, s sometimes people like to say that we climate scientists sleep all the uncertainty under the rug, but I've spent the better part of the last decade trying to understand the uncertainty in my data set. And if you look at, if you do an uncertainty analysis on this 1996 to the present period that, um, you know, that we're discussing, then you find that the trend could be anywhere from minus eight hundredths of a, of a degree C per decade to plus eight hundredths of a, so almost a tenth. So it's, you know, a big, broad, uncertainty envelope. And the other, all the other um, data sets fall within my uncertainty envelope. Oh, so okay. in that sense, we're in agreement. Oh, okay. Okay. So what, what do your customers use this te temperature data for? Um, and besides congressional testimony? Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, the, the most important, you know, it's a climate data set and it's for doing climate scientists with. So there's been a lot of work, you know, comparing, you know, our data set to the output of climate models. Um, we've done a lot of work, you know, looking for fingerprints of, um, of um, anthropogenic climate change in the satellite data, and we found those fingerprints. So, you know, a lot of things like that. Okay, so anthropogenic climate change does show up in your data set. Yes. Why do you think uh, uh, people who are climate contrarians uh, like to talk about the satellite data? The satellite data are the best data we have. We need to look at the satellite data. I mean, this is the best data that we have. Well, I think it, it's, you know, it seems pretty obvious that it, it fits their narrative the best of all the data they've got. Mm -hmm. And you know, earlier, before this so-called the slowdown occurred, they didn't like to talk about it because it showed warming, or in particular, they didn't like to talk about my data set because if you look from 79 to say 2005 or something like that, it shows quite a bit of warming. 
and it was not a popular data set among contrarians at that point. Now, the University of Alabama data set had went through several kind of versions or, or adjustments there. Mm -hmm. And can you, can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I think everyone tries to improve their data set as time goes on. And what's important is to not oversell it. And I think maybe they're a little bit guilty of that. What is the best online site to get quantitative global temperature data? Um, and there's a asterisk here, unbiased, actual, and current. Well, I can easily answer that. It's the <laughs> University of Alabama in Huntsville. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, an early version of their data set actually c contained an error of, in how they accounted for this drifting measurement time that I talked about earlier, and, and we pointed out that error, and then they changed their data set to, you know, to get rid of that problem. And, and, and how, what, did, what was the effect on the data set when they changed that error? Well, it made it a little bit warmer, if I recall. So, uh, do you work with, like, the University of Alabama? When, I mean, do you guys talk to each other and say, you know, we like to do it this way, you like to do it that way? I know we did, we did more in the past, maybe not so much recently, but, you know, mm -hmm. we're on okay terms with the University of Alabama. Sure, sure. And, and so, the differences are primarily, like, uh, just matters of uh, personal choice as far as adjustments and, and things that you make. Right, and then I think there's, you know, there's some considerable difference in interpretation of what the results mean.